Hey everyone, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Welcome back to the DIY Homestead Project channel. My name is Bruce. I recently picked up this one inch by two inch rectangular galvanized tubing and I'm going to use this in a future project to build a DIY welding table. So in this video I'm going to use some tips and tricks for flux core welding. See if I can't come up with the best method for welding this thin walled galvanized steel tube I can use on this new project. I picked this stuff up. This is like a old pallet or something that something was shipped on this. So it was part of a pallet. It's very thin, 18 gauge, 0.052 inches, and 1.3 millimeter. I think that's what that works out to be. The key here was this was so cheap, but it was around $7 for about 80 feet in length of usable 1 inch by 2 inch galvanized thin rectangular tubing. This is just some of the pieces that I got out of it as I got it kind of broke down but you see where I've got some rusty welds to grind off of there and and the way that was put together but I've end up with about 80 feet of usable rectangular tube when I'm done processing it. And I think I'm going to end up with about three different joint configurations for this particular build and I'm going to experiment with flux core wire. I'll be doing several T-joints or fillet welds and then some butt joints a few different configurations as I piece this project together. Through my research, I think that this flux core, even though it's kind of a smoky, dirty, messy process, is going to be really good for this thin galvanized tubing. I just need to find a technique that's going to work. I'm going to try a couple of different techniques on this that I'll show you as I go through this process and then show you my results. Now, as you always should do, be careful. There are some cautions you need to take when you're welding galvanized steel. Do what you need to do in order to do this safely. Now, I'm going to be using the Yes Welder YWM200 machine on 120 volts. I've got it set up for 14 volts and 3.9 on the wire feed speed, which is approximately 140 inches per minute. I started with 3.5, which is recommended by the literature that comes with the machine. And then my end numbers were 14 volts and 3.9 on the wire feed speed, which is about 150 or 160 inches per minute. Now these Fox Alloy welding gloves are really nice for this. I used them throughout the whole process. They kept my hands from getting burnt. I can handle those hot pieces of metal. I really like them. Fox Alloy, link in the description. Now for this first weld, I'm just going to try and to go back and forth, kind of in and out of the weld pool as I go across this T-joint with the flux core wire. The whole point here is to try to keep from getting a super hot spot and burning through. And uh, you kind of come out of that puddle, it cools down, and then you go back into it and continue on. And that's the first technique that I used, and it seemed to work pretty well. Now remember, I had the uh, wire feed speed on the 140 inches per minute, or 3.5 for this particular piece, and I think it was a little bit cold, so on the next one I turn it up. But here's a look at the first T-joint or fillet weld I did. Like I said, it's a little bit cold, I believe, but it looked like it welded pretty fair. And I didn't burn through on this particular joint. Here's a look on the inside. You can see the white residue from the zinc burning off from the galvanized coating. Next joint, we'll do this butt joint. It's kind of a V joint, and I'm going to use the same technique. Just oscillating forward and backward right down the joint in and out of the weld pool, trying not to burn through. And as I look in amazement, I realize that I completely missed about half of the joint with the weld bead. So I decided to go right next to it and run another one across there. See if I can actually make a decent weld out of it. And I decide to adjust my uh, darkness on my hood so I can see a little bit better. But that's what it looked like after I finished up the second bead and it's still not pretty. On that left hand side you can see I could just, I still again just barely got the joint. But in reality it's a pretty decent weld and I think it will hold even though it doesn't look very pretty. Next we'll do these uh, lap joints right on the ends. 
And this first one I just ran straight down. I didn't do any oscillating or manipulation. And the second one, the same thing. The second one came out a lot hotter than the first one. And I think it's because I just slowed my travel speed down. So travel speed has a lot to do with your results when you're uh, welding thin galvanized steel with flux core wire or with any wire, to be honest. That's the first one, and here's the second one. You can see it's a lot flatter and it was a lot hotter. Decent penetration, burnt off the zinc coating on the inside. Get those cleaned up and have a look at them here. Another one of my favorite tools, if you're welding with flux core wire, these wire wheels and wire cups from Benchmark Abrasives, they come in handy, beat the heck out of using just a hand wire brush, which is suitable, but this just makes it a lot easier and does a much better job. Overall, the welds came out okay, and they'll definitely hold the pieces together. Second one was a T-joint in this configuration. I got a couple of butt joints on the ends with gap in there. Try to show you the gap. And then a couple of T-joints or fillet welds. Now on this one, I decided to use the cursive E. And I'm keeping my cursives real small because this is a real small weld bead. This actually turned out to be my preferred method for welding this galvanized thin wall steel with flux core wire. It's the first bead, real uniform looking, looks real nice. And we'll clean it off and have a look at it here in a second. And we'll run the rest of these beads first. Same technique. Small cursive ease helps you kind of keep a rhythm and, and consistent travel speed. And I uh, made those adjustments to the welding hood and repositioned my piece for the sun and I have a much better view of the weld. So I'm able to put that weld bead right where I want it to be. This will most likely be the technique that I'll use when I build the welding table. Small cursive ease, try to point toward the solid metal instead of the open end piece and prevent the burn through. No burn through on this particular joint, but good penetration and a decent looking weld. My opinion is it came out real nice. These are some really good looking welds for my skill level with flux core wire. Some of the best welds I've done, I think. Even though it is thin galvanized steel, I didn't get any burn throughs. Almost no spatter stuck to the plates or stuck to the tubing. And this is the last joint that I'll try using the same techniques. I do have the Yes Welder YWM 200, 14 volts, and my final result was 3.9 or about 150 to 160 inches per minute on the wire feed speed. Positioning, stability, ability to see your weld, all those are factors. Now this one I did get a burn through, so I'm going back and filling that back in. And we'll show you the results of that burn through repair when I get it cleaned up here in a minute. Another burn through right there on the corner at the start of that particular weld.
you can see right on the corner and right there to the left of that T-joint where I burnt through. And after I cleaned it up, this is the result. You can see a little extra weld bead right there where I covered up that burn through spot. But I still think that's totally acceptable, especially for what I'm using this for. Almost no spatter. Clean, all cleans off with the wire wheel from Benchmark Abrasives. And in my opinion, it really makes for a decent looking, good, str solid, strong weld. And those are the techniques that I'm going to use and the tricks that I've learned of welding thin galvanized steel with flux core wire. Watch for my upcoming video where I actually build a DIY welding table out of this thin galvanized tubing. In the meantime, click the video on the screen now for another one of my welding and fabrication videos, and we'll see you over there.